Vincent, how are you? Hey Dominique, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome to our Virology Forum 2019 Throwbacks. Thank you for joining us as the CEO of H. Moser and C. You moderated the panel, What H. Moser Did Last Year in the Orology Forum 2019. And we just have a couple of points that you said that we want to play to you now. And then I have a question as for each moment. Okay, does that sound good? Sounds perfect. Okay, allons-y. If, if you use uh, humor and, and provocation, you might, um, as we said, attract maybe a younger crowd. Um, some people might not take you as seriously as, as, as you could. Um, I had people saying, asking me, uh, you know, is the brand becoming more serious in the future? So is that a formula that works for, you, for small brands that need awareness, but then a little bit like a human being that moves from the teenage in, into becoming an adult. So you have this need of emancipation and suddenly you become something that is, you know, more serious. Is that, do you think, the life cycle of a brand? And, and therefore, there is this need for brands like ours, Moser, to emancipate doing those crazy provocative things, but then eventually it goes away. Considering the current climate, okay, i.e. crisis mode, you know, left in the wake of corona destruction, we see a surge in deformalization of com communications amongst brands, which logically had to happen if the brands wanted to be heard or seen during this chaotic time. And budgets have been slashed too, and time is the most effective currency left now. So how would you answer your own question of brands having to get serious now considering long-term repercussions of corona or life after corona with all this enlightenment about efficiency going on and finally the realization that was understood by some you included that being formal in marketing is now largely considered not just a turnoff but untrustworthy more and more hmm. well that was a long question um i can repeat it if you want <laughs> no, but I think uh, I think it's 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 the right question to ask your, yourself today. I think we learn a lot from this crisis in terms of um, how to get a share of voice, and I think a lot of brands and a lot of people try to um, to digitalize everything, and I think that's a good thing to ask yourself about how can I get closer to my customer, how do I engage my customer. That was a question that we've been asking ourselves and many others have done that for, the, for, for years. And suddenly you're facing a situation where the formula that many were using in the past just doesn't work and they have to switch from one day to the other to something else. And I think it's not that simple. You cannot just suddenly organize Zoom uh, meetings and live Instagrams and try to digitalize everything. I think there needs to be the right uh, level of content of uh, preparation and what I felt and I don't know if I'm answering your, your question I think you cannot just suddenly say I need to be a little bit more informal and I, and I just need to, to, to use those, those tools from one day to the other it just doesn't work like this I think there's there's a lot of preparation there's a uh, you need to adapt your message you need to adapt um, uh, the language uh, you need to create the proper content and uh, what I've seen in the recent um, months was a lot of of people kind of my feeling was everybody's a little bit panicking and feel like oh I need to be part of it so I'm just going to do this I'm just going to do Instagram lives and I'm just going to do those those things and in the end of the day we have we have this massive number of people trying to communicate I felt it was sometimes very um, dry and uh, and at the end of the day, the community that got engaged was always the same. And on our side, we felt let's continue to do what we've, we've done in the past. So not suddenly try to overdo it to compensate. On the contrary, let's try to be extremely selective. Let's try to have when we do it, we do it properly with a, with a strong message, with, with a lot of preparation. Uh, rather than trying to be every day on, uh, um, uh, online because I feel some people were, were maybe frustrated or, or bored at home not knowing what to do and they had to, um, to report to, um, to a board or to a management that felt, you know, I'm paying you to do something, you better do something. And, um, 
and I felt that at some point that becomes it's not constructive anymore, and I don't think it, it brings much to the brand. That's my feeling. So yes, there's this need uh, at some point to use those tools, but it, you cannot switch from one to the other. Or if you do that, then it, it has to be well thought and well prepared. Okay, so you're saying no matter what, time should not be, nothing should be rushed, even if your time is cut though. It doesn't matter as however long it takes, it just has to be done well. I think engaging people has to be in an honest and um, I mean the time, your time and the time of the people who is listening to you is important. So let's make sure we, we make the best use of that time and not just trying to say, you know, it's important that I, I grab the market share or the, the voice share, the shared of voice, probably the better the, the name for it, because otherwise others will take it and then you, you use it, but with a very empty content. Grabbing the voice share, I like that. Did you make that up? Yeah. Cool. It's, it's nice. <laughs> okay. No, I don't know. It's, <laughs> Okay, let's go to the second point. Share screen. Okay. Let's go. Okay, so, so when you get to be the size of one of the large watch companies, is that, as you were saying before, you have to take yourself more seriously. Does that mean you can't have a sense of humor then? I mean, the Coke Pepsi thing, when Pepsi got as big as Coke, they can't do the taste test. I don't know, we, we are talking about Apple, right? In the beginning, 1984. At that time, they were the underdog. They were go, going after IBM. I still think today, Apple managed to be disruptive, provocative. Um, and I, I, th I think it's a philosophy and a mindset, and I hope we can keep it. I think, I think it's, it's the way you, you want to work and the people you have around you and the image you, you, you want to create. I mean, again, for me, that's why I was asking about the human dimension. It's about the people. Humor is human, and I think that's as long as we can keep this human dimension in a brand, you should like this. And I think it's easier when you're independent and you take your decision and some, some. Okay, so in light of that, okay. How have you been positioning H. Moser and C to appeal to this human dimension, as you've said now? when it's most needed by people in isolation? I think it's, it's quite simple. We, for me, it's, it's driven by, by service and, and ears. The, I mean, we have a team of people that are very, very connected. Um, they need to, we said, any question on any channel, any way people trying to contact to, uh, with us, uh, we need to answer within 24 hours. And uh, it's anywhere from Instagram, YouTube, WhatsApp, emails, etc. And engage people. Be honest. There's no there's no standard um, answer uh, for anybody uh, in the in the company. And I think we have um, we have people that are that that. I mean, we had discussion this morning with with uh, the sales team. People like the idea that the people that are answering are. It comes very natural. We have a lot of watchmakers that answer you know, very um, honestly, any question. There's no marketing preparation behind that. And we try to really separate that. Marketing never answers a problem or a question from any customer. It has to come from the watchmakers um, uh, as much as possible uh, or, or sales team. And the sales team are many of them watchmakers. And I think that's what people uh, appreciate in our way of engaging and talking to people and answering their questions, their concerns. Um, I think you, you can test a brand about the way they answer problems and they react to problems. Many, I think many brands will try to find a way to get out of it and, and deny it and blame the customer or, or their partners uh, or you take responsibility or, uh, for it. And I think for me, it's very important that we take responsibility in any uh, circumstances. You always say, um, you know, the client is king but I, I think that has to be the case in the way you, you, um, respond, to the, you respond to them. And uh, of course, sometimes you have people calling you and say, you know, uh, this watch doesn't work. And you, obviously the watch has, has, been, has fallen down on the floor and you're like, you know, it's not very honest. How do you, tr you treat that? Um, 
but you cannot, you know, go face to face to the, the customer and say, you know, obviously this is your mistake. And no, you need to explain, you need to, to um, show, you know, how you analyze this, what was the process. And, and, and I think if you're honest and you, um, you, you, you bring the people through the process, they understand it. So for me, again, it's about honesty, trust, building the trust with the people, with our partners, with our clients. And that comes, that the only way to do that is by being as natural as possible. Okay. So and there's no form, formatted, formatted uh, answer or standard answers. Everything is, um, is very personal. And, and, and I let everybody try to do it there on their way, on their own. If I need to help or somebody in the management needs to come into the picture, then we'll do it. I mean, was that your mantra before this crisis happened or was that something you considered the need to connect more with your clients since this? Again, idea? again, going back to Dominic, going back to what we said before, I think not, for me, nothing has changed. It's not because we are in a, in a crisis that we need to ch change our behavior. On the contrary, we need to just, sorry. Because you know how there's um, depression rates have risen and I imagine that your video, you know, the one with the make Swiss great again, the really funny one, well, one of the funny ones, you know, that, that if someone, you know, alone in their house, because some people, you know, hate being alone in their house. And if they had seen that, you know, that would um, create the connection. Open a, yeah, a way to, to, you know, laugh and then associate, you know, with a, a brand in a positive way that they kept me company and made me laugh. That's what I was thinking um, when I asked that question. Well, we didn't have that thought process again. I, for me, it, it, it is important that we continue. I mean, this thing, these are things we've been doing forever. So we don't have to change much. We're very digital as a brand in the way we connect, the way we engage. In, and, and that was the, ca the, the, the case in the past. The, the only difference today is that we're not traveling and meeting people face to face. But for the rest, it stays, and we need to do it. As I said, I want to, for, to my to my team. I said there's many di dimensions where we cannot be better than many, many of the big brands because we're just too small. But there are many where we can be better, and we need to be the best. And these are the kind of things where we have the chance because of our skill to be better than the others. And and our objective is to be the best in the way we we we, we create this link with uh, with people, no matter how. Is it a movie that we post on YouTube and we live forever, or is it the way we answer? right away a question uh, when somebody has a, has a concern or something they want to ask. And there we need to be the best. And it's not because there's a crisis that we will change that behavior. It's been there before and we need to continue with it right now. What we see is that others are trying now to, uh, to change their behavior. And it's, it's not, you don't learn it from one day to the other. You need the right people. That's what I was trying to say. I mean, for me, it starts with choosing the right people to, um, to be there in your team and answering the, the, those questions and talking to your customers. and and creating the content, etc. The best for that are the watchmakers. Yeah, obviously, you know, the watchmakers. That, you know, so you were ahead of the game. I mean, to be honest, I mean, I'm driving less uh, right now, and I think uh, Nicholas, Bertrand as well, and maybe we might, we might be more reactive. And, you know, the first thing you do in the morning, you check, you know, what comments have been posted on all those different channels, and you answer them. Like this morning, I spent uh, quite some time on, on, on YouTube because there's been a few videos about Moser with a lot of questions and positive comments. I mean, it's a great opportunity to, um, to talk to those people and some are asking questions about the perpetual calendar from Moser. And I just answer them in, in the first thing in the morning and then you move to something else. I think uh, people appreciate that you take the time to do that. Nice. And they, they might, I mean, it's under an, a different name. It's under Heinrich Moser. Is that for 150 years, but uh, so they don't know it's me behind it, but oh. that's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's the quality of the words, not the yeah. title. Okay, so let's go to the third point. Okay. The first disruptive thing you did was the open letter to the Swiss National Bank that make an impact. And then you followed up doing a lot of disruptive things. But when you took over the job to actually revive H. Moser and C, that's also a financial uh, assignment. We all know that a fun life is great and fun, but what is more fun to be disruptive or to be profitable? So 
Is it fun to be disruptive or is it more fun to be mature? Okay. How would you answer this question now? Well, the same way I probably answer, I can't remember how I answered that at that time, but uh, at the end of the day for, for in that part, in the particular case of Moser, I think we it would have, it would have been difficult to be profitable, to become profitable as we, we have without having a very singular way of communicating and being disruptive and, and challenging this industry and standing out in the, this crowd of amazing brands. So, I mean, for me, it's, I think it, it can only be, I mean, both things are fun. I mean, at the end of the day, um, well, being profitable is not fun. It's just uh, a need. <laughs> We're not, we don't have deep pockets like big groups. So we, it, it was a matter of survival to turn this brand around and as fast as possible, because otherwise eventually we would have to either give it away to somebody else or uh, go, go bust, which was almost the case in 2012 when we took over, which was not fun. So, uh, the end of the day, I mean, for us, we did our job with passion, and um, and today we continue to do this. Um, uh, this year, there's a, there's, it's a it's a crisis, yes, uh, but we we're not going to lose money. I mean, we are, um, uh, I think, doing quite a good job in continuing, despite this situation, to be fun, to be passionate, to create amazing products. We launched the Streamliner just at the beginning of the the pandemic. We launched a collaboration piece with MBNF uh, in the middle of it, where everybody was like, nobody is launching products for obvious reasons. We were like, no, we're going full blast with that one. And I think it brought a lot of smiles on faces and they were sold out in a matter of a couple of days. Andrew. There's a need for products. There's a need for something different. Uh, every year we try to do something special. So yes, there was the National Bank in 2015. Then we talked about connected watches in 2016 with the Swiss Alp watch. We did a Swiss Mad watch to address um, uh, the idea of uh, the changes on the regulation on the Swiss Made. Then we did the Swiss Icons watch to talk about uh, innovation and abuse in terms of marketing in 2017 or 18. Then we did the, the Moser Nature Watch, and this year it was about collaboration. And I think it, it came at the right time. It sucks that we couldn't present it in the middle of Watches and Wonders, which was the original plan together with Max and MBNF. But the, the, message, the message we wanted to talk about this year was how brands should collaborate. And I think to come in the middle of a pandemic where instead of fighting each other, I think it's, we need to, to work as an industry together. That was the best time to talk about collaboration. And that's why it went so viral. And that's why there was so much visibility. And that's probably why all those watches, well, they, I think they're beautiful and they're amazing and they, they're creative. And, uh, but I think it, that's why also it was a success. So it has to be, I mean, we, we need to continue to, to, to have fun and passion. That's, that's the reason of an industry like ours. It's about emotion. And yes, at the end of the day, you need to make money. Otherwise, you cannot continue to, to, uh, to develop with passion and, and, and fun. But again, it's, a, it's an industry. It's products that nobody needs to survive. And I think it's even more obvious today when uh, we are in the middle of a pandemic and people are dying. Um, some people are fighting for survival. And why do you, spend, do you sell expensive watches? Uh, there's may, may way more important other things. But in the end of the day, uh, my responsibility is to make this brand continue to grow because we need, as a, as a humanity, we need things to, uh, you know, to bring emotions to, to, to people and, and beautiful, crafted, mechanical products bring that. And we will continue to do so. And I think it's even more important in these times. Yeah, you make a good point. I mean, they didn't stop the flights. So many countries didn't stop the flights for so long because they just didn't want to lose money. And yeah. uh, we saw what happened there. But that's very beautifully put. You could have done it, represented it in Watches and Wonders, the LM101 uh, with H. Moser. And it, it could have been... Um, and the Endeavor Cylindrical to be other, you know, But specifically in the pandemic, showing you know people working together, even though everyone was isolated, finding a way to still manage to launch something together in times of chaos where usually it's every man for himself is something very admirable. So thanks for pointing that out. And that, oh, that was the final one, Edu. I want to thank you so much. Thank for, you, Dominique. Again, thank you for joining us.
do you want to say anything to the camera like to to peeps no i wish everyone uh, to be healthy and and happy in those difficult times and um and i hope we all can gather together again with uh, the dubai watch week sometime very soon because it's i think it's it, it has shown how much it contributed to developing the, the knowledge and the passion in, in, uh, in your region. And uh, thanks for supporting us. Thank you in return because you're part of that, you know, growth. So thank you again. And I'll let you go because I know you're busy. Have a good day, Edouard. And you too. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.